Now at 6, fear near Estacada after two bodies were found in the woods. It terrifies me. This morning, detectives are investigating this mystery in the Mount Hood National Forest. Ambulance medics under attack. And physically, they're, they're going to be fine. They're, the bigger concern really is, is that, that emotional and that mental anguish. That After multiple assaults, Portland paramedics are now getting self-defense training. Plus, protecting students against shootings. We're exploring the spike in sales of bulletproof backpacks. And Sprague Little League heads to the World Series. They're the first Salem team to make the tournament and their parents couldn't be prouder. Just puts a smile on my face and tear in my eye. <laughs> KGW News at Sunrise starts right now. And we start your Tuesday morning with a live look out at Yaquina Bay in Newport. Sun still not quite up there, but a pretty start to the day. A mild day out on the coast. One thing we didn't mention there at the top of the show, today is Left Handers Day. Yeah. I will tell you up front, this is the most right-handed news sketch you could possibly watch. <laughs> We're all righties coming at you today, including Vanessa still filling yeah. in for Rodney. Do right-handers have a day, by the way? Uh, Probably every other not. day. The other 364 <laughs> hour days. Good this to is know. your day, lefties. Good to know. Thanks, Drew. Hey, uh, happy Tuesday, everyone. Uh, we have another nice door on tap. Nice door. Nice uh, day on tap for us as we get to the afternoon here. We're going to uh, reach almost 80 degrees. So crank up that AC if maybe you've been saving it for the hot temperatures because it will arrive today. By 5 p.m., maybe you're driving home around then. It's going to be about 87 degrees as we transfer over to some of your other hot temperatures for today. This is what we're reaching as far as high. Tillamook is going to see 73. The more east we travel, we're also going to see the mid to upper 80s. And we're going to sit in the 80s for quite some time uh, through the week. I'll let you know when we cool down. That's coming up. Lacey? Thanks, Vanessa, and good morning to you. Want to check in with Drive 8, who is along I-5 southbound. You can see approaching that interstate bridge. It is pretty crowded as you get close to SR-14. That slowing starts at about 4th Plain. In fact, we'll check the drive times about 10, 11 minutes from Main Street all the way down to the Fremont Bridge. So you can see it is getting a little heavier from SR-500 down to SR-14. But the rest of the freeways look great. We are seeing some minor slowing on I-84 inbound. As you can see, nearly 20 minutes coming in from Troutdale. Stop and go inside of 205. Ashley? Lacey, thank you. Our top story this morning. Police are investigating after the bodies of a man and woman were found in the Mount Hood National Forest. Yesterday morning, somebody called 911 to report finding the bodies off a of forest road about 15 miles east of Estacada. Deputies don't know how the two died, but they did find a dog that was alive and unhurt. The news is pretty unsettling for everybody in the area. Um, it terrifies me. Yeah. I mean, my husband goes and walks and takes walks and wanders around and yeah, I don't like it. I don't like it. Anyone with information about this case is asked to contact the Clackamas County Sheriff's Office. A man who had been missing for two days was found dead at the Oregon Zoo. 62 year old Carl Ross Sr. was found in the rhino exhibit yesterday. Now that area is under construction right now and there aren't any current or there aren't any animals there currently. It is unclear at this point then how exactly he died. The woman charged with killing her brother and shooting two others is due back in court later today. This is video from 30 year old Tamina Strickland's first court appearance just a few days after that shooting August 2nd. Her brother, 22 year old Deontay Strickland, played basketball for PSU and was set to play football for the Vikings this fall. We have new details on the attack on two Portland paramedics. We told you about this yesterday morning here on Sunrise, just hours after it happened. We now know the suspects punched and pepper sprayed those paramedics. Yeah, Tim Gordon is following the story for us this morning. So Tim, we know that one of those was actually a patient. All right, she was actually on a gurney when it happened, Drew. We're told she changed her mind about being taken to the hospital, which happens, but then they say she started swinging. Now, this is very early yesterday morning. Two AMR paramedics out on a call on North Interstate and Prescott. Uh, the two were loading the woman when she punched one of them. Then a bystander pepper sprayed the other paramedic before he rode away on a bike. The woman you see her here, Tracy Lynn Casey, was arrested but then released. She didn't show up at court. Now there's a warrant for her arrest. Their paramedics will be physically okay, but psychologically, this is a tough thing. They want to care for that person in, in crisis, but then to find themselves in situations where they have to defend themselves to either the patient or the surrounding bystanders while they're trying to do the right thing, it's, it's really hard, and it, there's a lot of heartache over that. 
American medical response says attacks are up. In February, a man stabbed a paramedic waiting at a red light. And in March, a patient carjacked an ambulance while being transported. This summer, AMR rolled out a new defense tactic training program. Paramedics are learning de-escalation techniques and self-defense. Those paramedics victimized yesterday had not yet had that training. AMR wants to remind everyone, paramedics, you know, they're there to help. And if they are attacked, there are tougher sentencing guidelines for those who target emergency medical responders. Guys, back to you. Tim, thank you. Police have released some new information about the man accused of shooting two Washington County deputies near Hag Lake last week. That's the suspect, 56-year-old Dante Halling. Deputies were searching for him in the woods when they say they got into that shootout. Court records show he has a long criminal history, including a 2015 case where he allegedly attacked police officers with a wrench. Investigators are now asking for your help to find out what he was doing in the weeks leading up to this recent shooting. He has a very unique jacket, backpack on. Um, we're hoping that somebody will recognize that stuff and say, I remember him from wherever, whether it was a location near Hag Lake or somewhere, um, wherever they think they saw him. Oh. One of the deputies heard in that shootout remains in the hospital. The other is home recovering. Halling is also being treated at a Portland hospital. No word on his condition or what charges he's facing. There has been another drowning in a local river. Dive teams recovered the body of a 15 year old swimmer at Oxbow Park in Gresham yesterday evening. It took rescue crews about four hours to locate the body. An eight year old drowned in the same area of the Sandy River late last month. Some more events in Portland have made changes that have planned protests at Waterfront Park this weekend. So here's what's changed so far for this Saturday. We told you yesterday morning about the first one, Roses on the River 5K Run and Walk. They've moved their race from Waterfront Park to the East Bank Esplanade. Now Kells has joined them in moving their event. In fact, Kells is canceling their Summer Smoker. It was a live amateur exhibition boxing match scheduled for Saturday. That is no longer going to happen. And the Portland Streetcar Scavenger Hunt has also been postponed. It will be rescheduled, but we don't know yet the date. We're going to keep you updated on any other changes to events this weekend. You can keep your eyes on those changes. KGW.com, the place to go. The Trump administration is announcing its most aggressive steps yet to curb legal immigration. Here's your Connect the Dots. The Trump administration just introduced a new rule that would make it harder for low-income immigrants to stay in the country legally. Let's connect the dots. The rule would limit immigrants applying for green cards or visas if they've ever, or could sometime in the future, depend on public benefits like Medicaid, food stamps, or public housing. The director of U.S. Citizenship and Immigration Services says the move is to clarify existing law known as public charge. It dates back to as early as the 1800s and was a way to deny entry to immigrants who were likely to become a drain on the economy. 20 years ago, that rule was changed to limit green cards for immigrants dependent on cash benefits like Social Security. But that one did not include health care or other benefits that didn't handle cash. This new rule is set to take effect in October. Critics say it would favor wealthier applications and could dramatically reshape the nation's immigration system. It's expected to draw legal challenges from immigrant rights groups, among others. And that's your Connect the Dots. Let's get to some more national headlines in your morning rush. The Trump administration is finalizing rollbacks on the Nixon era Endangered Species Act. The changes and automatic protection for species classified as threatened. They will also allow economic cost to figure into whether a species should be protected. Conservation groups warn the move could put more animals at risk for extinction. We're waiting to learn the name of a California trooper who died in a shootout on a highway in Riverside yesterday. This happened during a traffic stop. The driver who pulled a gun on the officer also died in that shootout. Now to Chicago, where a man is in custody after police say he opened fire at a veteran's hospital. Officers say he started shooting an assault rifle outside the medical center before going inside. Witnesses say officers were able to arrest him before anybody got hurt. He has not been identified, but we do know he is not a veteran. 
There are a lot of questions over a nuclear accident in Russia. Seven people died, including five elite scientists, when a small nuclear reactor exploded. They were reportedly testing a missile. President Vladimir Putin boasted about last year. Radiation levels in nearby cities spiked after the blast. Police have not made any arrests yet after a car crashed into the pool of a Seattle area LA Fitness. Wow, it happened yesterday morning. Three people were swimming at the time. One of those swimmers even helped the driver get out safely. Luckily, no one was hurt. And that is your morning rush. That is crazy. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I couldn't believe it when I heard that story. Wait, three people were in the pool? Yeah. All okay, thankfully. Wow. Yeah.